Yeah, you can So today we are very happy to have uh, Zhao Dai from MIT telling us uh, modeling the pseudo gap state in cool phase common disorder of the pair density wave. Let's welcome Zhao. Uh, sorry for the delay, so now let me start. Uh, today I'm talking about my uh, recent work on cool phase with Patrick at Sanko. And I'm um, following the pseudo gap state by a fluctuating high density wave. So, uh, because I have a lot of time today, I can give a, a more careful introduction than I usually do. So, uh, a cool phase is a, a difficult subject to talk about. It has a history of 30 years. Uh, uh, so, before cool phase, people think about superconductor as the simple phase diagram illustrated here. Basically, at high temperature, we expect a Fermi liquid metal, and uh, below a few Kelvin, uh, electron pack condensed, and we have a BCS superconductor. That's what people usually think about, superconductor. But Cooper is this company. Sorry, so, so for Fermi liquid, this is just referring to electrons in the, in uh, the metal, is that right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's so so can, can you say what's Fermi liquid? Oh, Fermi liquid is uh, smoothly connected to free electrons. Yeah. It, it, there is a, a field where we see, uh, and there is some uh, energy correction to the electron excitation energy. But electrons, uh, but excitations are still uh, smoothly connected to single electrons. So you can model this by looking at, by considering the electron is a potential, purely potential. Yes. And you can somehow smoothly turn off this potential to a cross with free electrons. Oh, no, 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 no. The potential is sometimes uh, important. Okay. But it's still free. And we have still have a lattice momentum concentration. I see. There's still a uh, uh, And there's interaction, but interaction is only a, a fraction to the energy rather than a fundamental change. Okay, but uh, uh, the cuprates is a different material. So people were first attracted by the superconducting dome, and because the TC is very high, it's near 100 Kelvin, much larger than the field Kelvin previously. So uh, people dream about room temperatures. But then uh, uh, physicists soon found that the uh, normal state above the superconducting dome is more interesting than the superconducting itself. Are basically at uh, this uh, high temperature uh, near this critical doping, as, as you already talked about, I heard you talking about this fan of uh, strange metal. So basically, uh, it's a, a region we still have a. Uh, so let me uh, start from the uh, simplest, the Fermi liquid. So uh, actually, uh, let me talk more about this material. So this material. Uh, this is a phase diagram uh, with temperature and uh, doping. Uh, so at zero doping, we have one electron per sec. Uh, and the material is a malt insulator because the electron repulse each other. So usually in a band, is, a band uh, theory, if we have one electron per sec, we would have a metal. But now because of the strong repulsion, we can have an insulator. The electron doesn't move, only their spin is active. So that's the mock insulator here. And the spin form an anti magnetic lattice. So that's the uh, material without doping. And when we dope, we remove electrons from the material. And after remove 20% uh, electron, and the rest of the electron become mobile again. Again, the band theory works. So after removing, removing means. Uh, so before doping, we have like this lattice, and the average is one electron per side. And they form an anti ferromagnetic order. But removing means we uh, use uh, other chemicals to change the original chemical. So we remove the total number of electrons, roughly speaking. And now some sides are empty, some sides are occupied by electrons. And so, so cooler repulsion doesn't. Uh, completely block the motion, and the electron can move again. And so, uh, and then above this 20% doping, we again have the usual Fermi liquid. 
it's mostly connected to free work, even though there's strong interaction. And uh, what well, the interesting thing happens in between for this uh, 5% percent to 20%. At high temperature, we have a strange metal behavior. Basically, we still have a large uh, Fermi surface. Uh, uh, are you familiar with Fermi surface? <laughs> it's uh, just a surface between the uh, occupied electron and unoccupied electron. And uh, in Cooperage, we have a, a square lattice, and it can be viewed as a 2D layer material. And uh, so, so the typical large Fermi surface we see in this Fermi liquid is like this. Uh, electrons in the middle are occupied. So we move by 2D? Uh, oh, two-dimensional, two plus one-dimensional. Cooperate is a three-dimensional material, but it's uh, composed by layers. And the, each layers are a weakly coupled. OK, uh, and that's the idea. So uh, the strange metal phase, uh, the strange metal region is that uh, we still have this uh, large surface. But the uh, uh, temperature dependence of resistivity is very strange. Uh, basically, it's a, a resistivity goes linearly in temperature. And in a usual Fermi liquid, it should go quadratically at low temperature. And uh, that's still a puzzle. And then uh, at lower temperature, below this T star temperature, we have the pseudo gap phase. And this is a phase where we uh, gradually lose this Fermi surface. It's like um, part of the Fermi surface uh, has a gap. And the other part of Fermi surface is still gapless. And there's no closed Fermi surface. And that's the biggest puzzle. And it's contradicting to any conventional theory. Uh, because usually in a free electron system, uh, I, you occupy free electron energy, and there is an occupy for me see and outside for me see it's empty. And it's always a closed for me surface surrounding the occupied electrons. Right. But now in this pseudo gap phase, it uh, looks like part of the Fermi surface is gone, gapped, and, but part of the Fermi surface still exists that has uh, unconnected arcs, and that's very strange, and that's the puzzle we want to solve. So you see that you're illustrating this using slide one, but somehow I don't understand. So why does that? Uh, WeChat audio. Oh, uh, this one? Yeah. Oh, so here I'm drawing the uh, uh, Fermi surface. Uh, and this is the large Fermi surface on uh, Fermi liquid phase. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so that's where we can excite, that's in this moment. Uh, this is where we can excite electron at zero energy. Uh, but uh, below the T star temperature, uh, we cannot excite electron at zero energy at this moment, only on this arcs. And that's the same. And, and this, uh, this gap here for exciting an electron is called the pseudo gap. So, uh, so, in the phase diagram, we can see that um, a pseudo gap is an intermediate region where uh, we start to lose the large Fermi surface, but we do not completely lose it as in the superconductor. And uh, along the doping axis, the pseudo gap is again an intermediate region. Uh, it's a transition region between the uh, multi insulator and the fully mobile Fermi liquid. It's very interesting to see like how a material can change from a multi insulator. Is, isn't that there's some overlap between pseudo gap and superconducting phase? So oh, yes. yes. Uh, so somehow superconducting so is related to gap. Uh, superconductivity. Oh, okay. Yeah, superconductivity will give a gap. But um, there are evidence that uh, superconducting gap only prominent on this uh, arc. And the original pseudo gap still maintains even in the uh, superconductivity. Okay. 
But again, uh, in the superconductor phase, it's hard to say what is a signal gap. It's, they become more subtle. I see. So, so in the superconducting phase, there are two types of gaps. One is some superconducting gap, and another is some pseudo gap. Uh, that's that right? what people say. Okay. <laughs> but there is still this uh, D wave superconductor has nodes. Yeah, yeah. So part of the pseudo, pseudo part of Fermi arcs has these nodes. So I'm, I'm aware in the case space is gap except the nodes. So I'll talk about it later. But why do people say pseudo in the pseudo gap? Why pseudo? pseudo? Oh, uh, I think because it's only a gap in part of the case space, not the not a gap. Is that clear? But it's just names. If people say pseudo, uh, probably because they don't understand it. And so, uh, so with this uh, uh, very complicated phase diagram, all we can hope is to uh, give us a radically consistent picture about it. So we do phenomenology, like high energy theories. We, we do not aim to derive a theory from the electron hypochromia. We want to guess a low energy theory that works for this case. And uh, we will see that uh, even to find an internally consistent theoretical picture is very hard. And we want to uh, achieve that uh, using uh, only a single assumption in this plot. Just touch it, I think it will wake up. Oh, it's perfect. So here is the outline. Uh, I'll first give a brief review of the pseudo gap phenomena, and uh, uh, maybe I can give a longer review uh, if nothing happens. And uh, then I talk about the idea of high density wave, and then I go to the main work, which is how to uh, uh, consider a quantum disordered high density wave that can expand the pseudo gap in some local match. And finally, uh, I compare it with an uh, uh, experiment. OK, before I introduce the pseudo gap, uh, let me first introduce the uh, usual expectation of the D-wave superconductor. Uh, as I said, um, for usually uh, for uh, temperature bigger than the superconducting transition temperature, Tc, we expect to have a large Fermi surface like this. Here is the electron band electron energy as function of momentum kx and ky. Uh, at zero energy, uh, there is a Fermi surface, it's a red line. And below Tc, uh, we know Cooper is a D wave superconductor. So there is a superconducting gap opening, uh, and we have agreeable plants. And the energy is uh, ek squared plus delta squared. And importantly, this delta is exactly zero at this pi pi direction. Symmetry. And so it's, the gap is zero at the four nodes and the green dots here. And the gap is maximum uh, at the anti nodes. So that this node and anti nodes are definition. They're just uh, a convenient name for the momentum point. Sorry, what's the meaning of exactly of the D wave? So I know that in a sphere of modeling, I think uh, I'm going to get But it seems that this is too. Uh, so this D wave is the representation of C form symmetry. Uh, C for C for rotation symmetry. It's not L equals two, so it's C. Uh, C. For 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 rotation. For for. Yeah. Is in your free space, you have a uh, continuous rotation, and you have yeah. angular momentum. Um, uh, so so in, so so in three D system, you can talk about decomposition to S P. Uh, in two D, you can also. Two D. This is also angular momentum. Uh, L equals zero one two. S wave is S uh, L equals zero. And D wave is now equals to two. Right, but now uh, the <laughs> angular momentum is only uh, uh, defined up to four because we have four fold rotation. So when I say D wave, I refer to the lattice function. Okay, so uh, that would be the naive expectation for uh, D wave superconductor. But uh, as I uh, said before, that's not what happens. Uh, in, in Cooper's, because we have this uh, weird pseudo gap region. 
So, uh, so in, uh, in experiments, we can determine the electron dispersion directly by this power pass experiment. That's we use a photon to kick out an electron and measure its energy and momentum. So we can infer the energy and momentum of the electron in a frictional material. And so, uh, so uh, doing this measurement, uh, and we found that uh, uh, actually uh, the electron at the node and electron uh, near the node and electron near the antinode behave very differently. Right? So near the node, like on, on these arcs, uh, a superconducting gap on, opens only below PC. So this these different lines are different temperatures, and uh, the x-axis is energy, and we fix a momentum point near the node. And we scan the energy, and we see at which energy we excite the electron. And um, here we can see that the, the red line is TC. And here we can see that the uh, superconducting gap opens near the node only below TC. But at a different momentum point, at the anti node, things are very different. So this line here is TC. But there is already a huge gap open. The Fermi surface is already gone. And the gap opens at a temperature uh, like far above TC. So that's what people call pseudo gap. It's a gap opening um, at the anti node uh, before we enter the superconducting Is there a way to tell the difference between a superconducting gap and, say, like a band gap? Uh, uh, what gap? A band gap. Yeah, like can can you tell somehow that uh, uh, like the super, the gap on the left is like the superconducting gap and the gap on the right is not superconducting? Oh, uh, you cannot you cannot uh, just from this picture. Uh, so um, okay, so let me say more about this. Uh, so yeah, this is our pass. So we can only probe the occupied electron. So actually, the right half of this figure is just uh, fake. It's symmetric. Uh -huh. And uh, so if, uh, if we use STM, we can uh, propose occupied and unoccupied electron. And uh, one signature of superconducting gap is that it's symmetric for electron and pole. So if you see that, that's uh, most probably a superconducting gap. But it's not absolute. You need to do other experiments to see. So uh, I say it's uh, not a superconducting gap. Uh, for two reasons. One is that uh, if you measure the resistivity is not there, so it's not a superconductor. And the other is uh, the momentum dependence of the gap is not, uh, not, in, not exactly as the D wave superconductor, as I will show you later. Is there like a momentum dependent resistivity measurement that you can make? No, no. Resistivity is everything on that. So, so in principle, you can uh, smoothly interpolate between these two, right? By changing oh yeah, yeah. That's that's this other thing. So there's so this, no this whole between. thing. This whole thing is the, uh, sharply defined only at zero temperature. At finite temperature, there's always some feeling in at zero energy, and there's yeah, at finite temperature, uh, uh, strictly speaking, there's no difference between the uh, insulator and the metal. Everything comes back. Everything is thermally excited. And the metal and insulin are smoothly connected. So pseudo gap doesn't mean too much. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, for the anti node, uh -huh. like between the temperature, let's say, compare the temperature larger than 92 mm -hmm. K and mm -hmm. below 92 K, mm -hmm. can you see what are the major difference? Okay. I think you are saying the one is. Entering to the pseudo gap region, but below. There, there's no difference. There's okay. no problem. Difference. So that's why people think that uh, near the anti node, the pseudo gap just stays what it is. Uh, only the node of fermion start having this new superconducting gap. That's one way. So at, at TC, uh, there are still nodes, right? So 
Uh, so there's like no cap at the node, right? There's only some cap near the node. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no gap exactly at the node. But why is that still circumvalid? Oh, uh, uh, whether it has a node it has nothing to do with whether it's superconductor. Right? A superconductor can be gapless. As, uh, okay. as long as there is a superconductivity response, as long as you break Q1 symmetry, and uh, so if there, there is some continuous uh, thing that the uh -huh. connection can go to, then you can scatter, right? So wouldn't that destroy some connectivity? Uh, no, you would not. Uh, you have to calculate the response to electromagnetic field. So okay. if you can think about it this way. So if you have a superconductor already exists, so, so the U1 field coupled to the electron charge is keeps. And now you add some gap-based electron, and that wouldn't change the Higgs difference. So, so you are saying that the yeah. so the superconductor is more robust than the gap. Only S-wave superconductors we have. We also have P-waves. I just imagine this as a mixture of superconducting electron versus a normal electron. Yeah, as long as there's something like that. As you said, this, uh, uh, these two figures seem smoothly connected to each other. So what's really uh, uh, sharp about pseudo-gap that we can say on this area? So to say something sharp, we have to go to the zero temperature, because Fermi surface only sharply defined at zero temperature. And so one uh, important thing we can say about at zero temperature is uh, uh, whether whether these gapless arcs are truly gapless and the uh, uh, antinodal gap are sharp gap at zero temperature. If that's it, it's uh, directly contradicting any conventional theory. And the other thing is that um, uh, uh, so consistent with the gap, we also see a loss of electron density of states and the total electron carrier in transport measurement. Uh, but at zero temperature, we have the Lattinger theory. The area of the Fermi surface is the total electron density. And, uh, but now we have this open Fermi surface. We don't know uh, how to define the carrier density. Uh, and first, but we can still measure it experimentally. And uh, at zero temperature, we can again find the uh, sh sharp uh, statement about that. Uh, but this Lattinger theorem again only works at zero temperature. At finite temperature, we have no sharp statement. Right? So, in order to uh, study the pseudo gap theoretically, we want to go to uh, zero temperature to kill the superconductor. Unfortunately, the TC is too high, so we cannot probe the pseudo gap at uh, low enough temperature. So one way to kill the superconductor is by applying a magnetic field. If it's bigger than the critical field, uh, we can kill the superconductor and probe a pseudo-gap ground state at zero temperature. And that's what we want to do. And so at this condition, at zero temperature and high field, uh, uh, the recent experiments find uh, amazing results, that were unexpected results. Basically, the ground states show a very rich structure, uh, 
changing with doping. So before this five star cell doping, we have an antiferromagnetic mass insulator. And in this doping range, um, we have a metal. Pseudo gap. So this pseudo gap uh, extends all the way to the 19% uh, of me. And then we have a Fermi liquid. But within this pseudo gap phase, there's also changes. Uh, uh, between 8% doping and 16% doping, there's translation symmetry breaking, and then perhaps charge density. So, so this, does it depend on H or? It doesn't depend on H, okay. uh, as long as H is big enough. And this uh, magnetic field scale we need to kill the uh, superconductor is much smaller than the, uh, if you convert it to energy, it's much smaller than the pseudo gap scale. So we think it won't change the physics. So, at zero temperature, we cannot use the r pass data because uh, when you have magnetic field, the r pass uh, experiment doesn't work. And, but, but now uh, we have uh, uh, more experiments to look at. Uh, basically, we can look at the quantum uh, uh, oscillation. We can look at specific heat. And also the uh, call number. And also the Let me only talk about this three. And this, uh, uh, the specific key is simply talk, uh, tell us the uh, density of states of the excitation at low energy. Uh, so because the we have a partial gap in the pseudo gap region, the antinode, we expect the specific key to be pretty small. And that's indeed the case. And this call number uh, is telling us uh, the uh, total number of uh, active gaseous carrier in the system. And in a free electron system, this call number, uh, if we use the current in x direction divided by electric field in y direction times the magnetic field, uh, this just give us the, the total density. And if it's electron, it's negative. If it's whole, it's positive. And so what do we see uh, in this ground states? So it's very interesting. Uh, so recall that here, we have one electron per side. And um, here, we have a Fermi liquid. In the Fermi liquid, uh, the Fermi surface is, looks like this, and uh, we basically have a, 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 if we view it from the whole point of view, we basically have a, a simple uh, spherical Fermi surface of whole. So indeed we have a whole number that's whole like that's positive, and with whole number 1 plus p roughly speaking. That's the total number of whole in the system. So what is P? P doping. is the doping, the number of electrons. And, and just in between the 60% doping and 90% doping, the whole number suddenly jumps to P. It looks like this uh, one electron per side has become inactive. And that's also consistent uh, with that uh, we lose some of the Fermi surface. But here, uh, very interestingly, it changes sign. It becomes 
negative. Uh, indicating uh, that uh, we have an electron pocket. And this n is very small. Looks like we have a small electron pocket instead. And the Fermi surface, uh, which means the Fermi surface is completely different from the large Fermi surface, becomes something else. And in this range, again, we have a whole number of p. So that's the experiment. And also, we can compare the uh, quantum oscillation. So if you're familiar with quantum oscillation, the, the basic story is when we have a Fermi surface uh, under magnetic field, uh, uh, the Fermi surface, uh, the uh, fermions contact to Landau level. And this, this Landau orbitals moves in phase space um, uh, with magnetic field. So when a, a lambda orbital beats the Fermi <coughs> surface, uh, this, the uh, occupation of the electron and every quantity transport and thermodynamic quantity of the electron change periodically as we increase the magnetic field. So the period of this oscillation will tell us the area of the Fermi surface. And so because we appear to have uh, this uh, open Fermi surface, we don't really expect any quantum oscillation. But very surprisingly, there is quantum oscillation seen in this range between 8% doping and 16% doping. That's consistent with a, consistent with a small for, uh, small pocket. And its area is much smaller uh, than the large Fermi surface. Only two percent, yeah. and this order of magnitude, and it's consistent with the Hall number. And then a very important quantity. I Sorry. Forgot. So is that the quantum oscillation? Uh, uh, there's some periodicity. Yeah. The period is that uh, related to the enclosed? You have a Fermi arc, but if you enclose the Fermi arc, uh, how do you enclose the Fermi arc? So if you evaluate the period, period uh -huh. can you relate that to part of the... Yeah, there, there is a story I talked about it later. But, but you need something else more than the arcs. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so another thing we can look at is the wave map front law. Uh, I don't know if that's about right. Uh, this with my friend's law is we compare the uh, electron, uh, electric conductivity with thermal conductivity. And if it's electrons, uh, quasi electron that conduct heat and uh, electricity, uh, the electric conductivity would be exactly proportional to the thermal conductivity. And their ratio is a universal constant. So it's uh, the with my friend's law, this exists. Thermal conductivity over electric conductivity times temperature is a constant, fundamental constant. So if that's true, it's a, a strong hint that we have a Fermi liquid, and the low energy excitation are all electron with charge E. And uh, so it's very interesting to see whether this branch of the single gap metal obey with my friend's law, and indeed, I think now the conclusion is uh, for, for the doping from 5% doping all the way to 90% doping, with my friend's law seems someday. I, I feel. So that's very interesting because we have this very unconventional features in our text, and we don't know how to explain. It seems contradictory to a Fermi liquid. So, so this being constant is that it does not depend on temperature, right? It does not depend on temperature. It depends on, on, on Fermi and surface as area, Fermi surface shape, and any details. But does it depend on P? No, it doesn't depend on P. It doesn't depend on P. Uh, it's just some some KB square over E square pi square, things like that. Okay. It's all fundamental. It does not depend on whether it's effective to actually charge. Yeah. 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 Y
No, 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 no. It's just that one of them will actually tight. Okay. So, so now we have a very interesting situation. Uh, so before uh, uh, looking at the uh, high temperature data, we think pseudo gap is very unconventional. But looking at transport data at zero temperature, it becomes conventional again. So could it, the pseudo gap be just a Fermi liquid, but with a different kind of Fermi surface, especially in this range with CDW, where we see quantum oscillation, which is a strong evidence for closed Fermi surface. If it's a, indeed a Fermi liquid, then we should have a way to explain it in theory. So what's the meaning of closed Fermi surface? Oh, closed Fermi surface means some, something like this. The gap is, uh, the gap is fun, uh, connecting to a closed Fermi surface, just opposed to arcs. Oh. Actually, means there is a closed curve closed in closed curve. area. The Fermi arc doesn't have a So what's an example that does not have a closed? Oh, yeah, that, that is an example. No, that that continues. Continues. Sorry. Yeah, but you don't see it. You would see it. So in experiment, you, you, you find point. all the momentum point that has got this like, electron excitation. And, and you ask whether they form a closed curve on open arcs. And, and in a single gap, uh, it's in a, like open arcs. I thought somehow I thought that's a graph which should be interpreted like periodic. So therefore it's. Uh, it's it's periodic, but it's still open. You can see it ends before it gets. Yeah, uh, here is the uh, uh, point that it is like ends before it gets. Mm -hmm. That's what happens there, right? It kind of fades out, but you're supposed to imagine that it ends. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so then it's a segment, but then it's considered open. That is a segment. Okay. It's not a closed curve. Then you close the average. Okay. <laughs> No, but it's it's, oh, the, it's it, not a closed well, manifold. It, it's <laughs> not in the stat series. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's in the geometry sense. It's not yeah, a closed manifold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's interesting. Okay. So so these experiments give us hope and give us things to look at. So now. Uh, uh, so in this talk, I'll focus on this region where we have pseudo gap coexisting with the charge density wave. And we seem to have a small electron pocket uh, from transport data. And so let's see uh, how to make a consistent story of this data and the R class data. Conducting, conducting particles, quasi particles, still electrons, or will it be dressed? When you well, it could be dressed, but it still has charge E. It's not, uh, it's not it's fractional dress. It's not fractional, it's not charge E over two. Is it a common phenomenon? It doesn't matter. That's, um, although there is some interaction, the charge will not be. Uh, dress, but somehow only the mass can be dressed. Yeah, yeah, it is it's in condensed matter. But in high energy, you have a uh, electron holes, and so, so the charge can be renormalized by yeah. electron hole effects. But in condensed matter, you there are also holes, but somehow it matters uh, much. Uh, well, uh, if it's a Fermi liquid, uh, then the hole, well, the hole is not the hole like in high energy sense, but you grab here, like you have a direct point with particle form that in, in the with my friends don't inspire it. Yes, yes. But usually from the liquid you don't inspire it. Okay. Okay. Uh, another phenomenology here 
uh, is shown in this figure. Right? Uh, and the x-axis is again doping. Uh, but now the y-axis is the critical magnetic field. So it's a field we need to kill the superconductor. And uh, interestingly, uh, there is a deep here, two peaks here. So uh, indicating that uh, here we have some alternative ground state other than the superconductor that's having a close energy. So maybe that's why we can easily kill superconductor. Okay, and that's the region we're interested in. So sorry. What, what, why? Uh, uh, can you uh, repeat this explanation? Oh yeah. So uh, uh, so you, usually uh, you would be uh, you expect it to be uh, something like this that occurs, but now here is a deep, a deep. I mean, so you can easily kill the superconductor to switch to a non-superconducting state. So if we only require, if, if the critical field is zero, it means that two ground states are uh, equal in energy. And if the uh, critical field is very small but not zero, it means that two ground states is already close in energy. Only the, the superconductor is only slightly better. So if you apply a little field, you can switch the ground state to a different state. Uh, so what are the two ground states that you are talking about? The two ground states is the high field ground state and zero field ground state. And the high field ground state is supposed to be the pseudo gap metal range. And the zero field ground state is the big wave So So from now on, we'll forget about the superconductor and only talk about the high field pseudo gap ground state. That, that is a metal. No so why is it called high field? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's too, too naive. So uh, why is it called high field? Oh, because this 20 Tesla is pretty high. I think I'm not going to understand OK. But you had some problem that uh, H is way smaller, so how does it get? So it doesn't oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, if you uh, convert this. Uh, naively convert this magnetic field to an energy scale is 20 Kelvin uh, uh, to a MeV. So it's smaller than the pseudo cap, which is like a 60 Kelvin. Uh, yeah, sorry, 60 MeV, which is uh, 600 Kelvin. Okay. Are you going to model this curve by some kind of uh Land Dawkins for free energy. No, we're not doing that. I mean, the point here, you throw in the previous data is that there are some, maybe, some potentials. So there are, there are several different type of order. Uh, maybe two or three. I, I just find, right. maybe, yeah. yeah that's, I think that's what, what I still want to say is that, uh, yeah. did, did you try to explain why they see some of the shape? So, but it seems that you're saying that uh, the height is deep because there uh, the energy difference between two ground states are small. Uh -huh. But, but are, are you trying to explain why are they small in this particular region? Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't explained this. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, okay. Below this curve, uh, the, uh, the superconductive ground state. Be below this curve. Uh, yeah, it's super and then the above you call high field. Yeah, yes. And what's the low field ground state? It's super bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I have this clear. Yeah, this thing about the small Fermi surface, that's because you expect the size of the Fermi surface, like if you have a larger Fermi surface, you expect more stability to magnetic fields, like a like BTS theory. Uh, yeah, because if you have more, uh, more Fermi surface uh, under a magnetic field, uh, Low energy field not can respond to the magnetic field and lower the energy. Uh, so if you have a Fermi surface, it will be favored in high magnetic field as opposed to a superconductor where you don't have any Fermi surface. Why is that? Because the Lando levels can like spread out or something? Uh, you just, uh, because the superconductor is gap, you don't have any response to the magnetic field. Yes. But in metal, you always have some response. Mm -hmm. I 
guess like I want to understand why you this this comment about the small uh, Fermi circle. Uh -huh. It's just an experiment for itself. We don't know how to explain this. Uh -huh. But you say it's it's implied by this dip. In the oh no no no! It's not implied by the dip. Okay. But this dip implies that small Fermi surface, that ground state, is uh, is very close in energy with the supercontractor. Okay. State, even with no well, maybe I should not. It seems very confusing. But it's exactly. not clear now. Mm -hmm. okay. May I ask, uh, in PCS theory, mm -hmm. uh, what's the way to estimate this critical uh, magnetic field strength? Uh, it's that proportional still... to the PCS guy. But then there, is that still like uh, smaller if you convert that to energy scale? No, it gets comparable. So it's a special phenomenon for high TC, something like that? Uh, at this point, the HC2 is uh, com somewhat comparable with the gap, but at this point, it's much smaller. Okay. Yeah, it's it's special to may not be special to high TC, but special uh, but uh, even a D-wave superconductor, the HC2 is smaller than the PCS S waves. Is this something that is understood theoretically or is it uh, well, for simple D wave uh, superconductor, I think it's understood how to calculate this HC. Uh -huh. But for Fulcrum, there's no consensus why this HC is not Okay. okay. So uh, before I introduce our approach, let me talk about previous approach of. Um, Expanding the pseudo gap. So, so now we have this uh, charge density wave uh, coexisting with pseudo gap. So you may wonder whether this charge density wave alone can expand the pseudo gap. But in fact, the charge density wave cannot expand the pseudo gap uh, because if we try to open a, a gap by charge density wave, the fermion spectrum would look completely different from the r pass data. So this charge density will be more like a, a, a company uh, instability of the pseudo gap rather than the reason of the pseudo gap. So later we'll see that this charge density wave help explain the quantum oscillation while we have a close small electron pocket. But uh, why there are anti-nodal uh, gap and the nodal arc in the first place is not explained by charge density something else. Is it a charge density wave commensurate or commensurate? Uh, it's in general incommensurate. But for simplicity, I only consider commensurate. What's the meaning of commensurate? Uh, commensurate means the, whether the period of charge density wave is the integer multiple of the period of lattice. <laughs> and, uh, so a traditional explanation of the pseudo gap is by a fluctuating D wave superconductivity. Means that uh, we have some uh, electron pair into uh, charge two E bosons, but this charge two E bosons do not condense, and they are somewhat fluctuating, uh, somewhat fluctuating. And so that may explain why there is a gap uh, before we enter the superconductor, uh, because if electrons are already paired. They single electron we have in this But this picture have a problem in you cannot so easily explain the arc because the D wave pairing only has a node here. Everything else everywhere else are gap. So if you use a fluctuating D wave superconductor we would expect there's only one node, there's no gap is arc. And uh, additionally uh, uh, if you look at the r pass spectrum in detail, the, the gap, even at the antinode, does not look like the usual D wave gap. And, it's, uh, and one evidence is that uh, you can look at the gap minimum on this slide. If this D wave superconductor gap, then the gap minimum would be at the Fermi surface. But uh, in fact, in r pass, uh, it's seen that the a gap minimum is pushed outside the Fermi surface. So it's conjectured that something different. Okay, uh, now let, let me come to my uh, uh, 
story of time that's so there is a long history uh, about Thai dance when we uh, was well, starting uh, uh, from uh, like uh, at least 20 years ago. But not, I'm not starting from there. I'm starting from the idea of my advisor Patrick in 2014. So, so in 2014, Patrick has this idea uh, in this paper that uh, maybe the entire pseudo gap region can be explained by a, a fluctuating fire density wave rather than a fluctuating super zero moment super conductor. So a fire density wave uh, is an order that an electron fire condensed at a finite moment instead of zero moment. So uh, it also so it's two electron condensed, so it break U1 symmetry just as and it's other superconducting order. So this fire density wave is also a superconductor. If it's perfectly ordered, but uh, because of this momentum, uh, this paradise will also break translation symmetry, and because it breaks translation symmetry, it automatically generates some charge density wave at momentum two p. So if we use the story of paradise wave to explain the pseudo gap, we automatically get the charge density wave. Um, so because charge dance wave is already found experimentally, we can identify the pi dance wave momentum as half of the charge dance wave momentum. Now because we want to uh, get the antinode electron and it both x and y direction, so we use a uh, bidirectional pi dance wave. So we let uh, electron pi condense and four momentum. It's px minus px, py and minus py. So uh, that's all about uh, all the patterns. So, so if you, sorry, so if you uh, vary a p and you look at down a p, this is zero. Zero, most exactly. This is plus okay. some delta function supported. Exactly. So experimentally, you usually expect that there is some uh, profile, right? No, you expect it's a delta function. But if it's zero momentum, it's, it's usual superconductor. It's a delta function at zero momentum. Okay, so how sharp is this delta function? It's infinitely sharp. Infinitely sharp. There's like a finite size splitting, but besides that. Finite size splitting. Yeah, just like any kind of translation symmetry breaking. Well, if the system is infinite, then it's So the splitting is like uh, related to the size of the whole system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, this pi density wave, fluctuating pi density wave idea has a few advantages. Uh, first, because of this momentum, uh, it doesn't uh, gap out all the fermi-surface. You only gap out the antinode fermi-surface. I'll talk about it uh, in details later. Now I just sketch the properties of this. And so it naturally explains why there's art and antinode gap. And so is CDW also experimentally along x and y direction? Yes. And, and the CDW order is twice of the momentum p of the PDW. Uh, that's our proposal. Can it be four times? Some oh, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even 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 it can be. Yeah, and any even one. That is also a 2px plus 2py. So this is the smallest. Okay, and uh, uh, because of this momentum, it also explains the R pass uh, data in detail. For example, the gap minimum is pushed away from the Fermi surface. That's naturally explained by uh, PDW. And uh, uh, the third advantage is that it creates a charge that's where so, so that may explain why charge density will universally appear in corporates. And we don't need to uh, make charge density with an uh, additional assumption. And the next is that uh, it naturally explains the quantum oscillation time field. So now let me introduce more about the PDW spectrum. So can you please say uh, if you have pairs? Uh, why this uh, ratio between 
global connectivity then? Uh, the user can yeah, yeah, so, so if the time... Still like e versus 2 e. So, if, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, if it's in high dense web state with the other parameter condense, then, then it's a super conductor. It's not a metal, so there's no metal. But our proposal is to let this uh, other parameter fluctuate. So the electron gap due to pairing is still there but the ground state is no longer a superconductor. And now, uh, because of, so at low energy, we have both electron and higher fluctuation. And so we don't know immediately whether it satisfies with the mechanism. We have to find what the ground state really is. Okay. So, but uh, before we look at the fluctuating impedance with ground state, let's first figure out the other impedance with and so uh, now let's try to find out the paradise with spectrum. Uh, for a BCI superconductor, we have an original electron band, and I will mix it with a whole band. And the two electron whole hybridized, and we have a whole new band, a new band, like this. This is the usual BCI theory. But now that um, uh, for PDW, it's not a mixing between electron and hole at opposite momentum, but at shift in momentum. So we have this original electron band in black line, and we uh, flip it to a whole band, and we also shift it in momentum. Here we consider only if items will be x direction. So we shift the whole band in both uh, plus p and minus p, and we have these three bands. And we mix these three bands uh, to, to three new bands. Uh, this gap opening here. Uh, at the end, we get this uh, blue band, the green band, and the red band. The color doesn't mean that it's this red band. Yeah. So, so, very interestingly, uh, first of all, I, uh, so these bands are not particle hole symmetric at, uh, at any given moment, but it's particle hole symmetric at shifting. This may not be uh, immediately obvious because I do a cutoff. Is that uh, I should repeat this pattern periodically, and then there's a particle hole symmetry if we shift the moment. And the next thing is that uh, you see that the, for the green band, the gap minimum is shifted outside the Fermi surface considerably. It's not at the Fermi surface as in the DCS. And most importantly, uh, here is a cut that, uh, near the antinode where Fermi's, Fermi momentum is small, and we found a large enough high dense width and gap out from the surface. But for a cut near the node, uh, we see that uh, we still uh, uh, hybridize this electron band with whole band with, and shift the momentum of the whole band. But because now the Fermi surface, Fermi momentum is too large. Uh, there is no uh, hole nearby to hybridize this electron. So this electron just stays just as it was. So there's no gap opening near the node because of momentum mismatch. Only gap opening near the anti -node. So uh, that's why we expect the, this arc uh, anti node gaps. And so now I talk about why uh, this PDW uh, can induce a uh, charge density. So in that, in that picture, it looks like you move where the gap closing is when you introduce this interaction? Uh, yes. So the gapless node is modified. The, what is modified? Uh, like the, the nature of the, of the crossing changes near the node when you add this, right? This is where you're going to get your pocket. Uh, it, uh, so if you move this line up, I'm just looking at the band structure on the in the right with the three colors. This now the the crossing. Oh, which the uh, node was at k equals zero before, right? Uh, and now the gapless points are a little bit shifted. Sorry, the node is never at k equals zero. But in the in the plot, 
Uh, which one? Second one? This one. The other one. The right. Yeah. So where was the where was the node before? Uh, this this is the original this one. Oh, I see. So it didn't. No, it's different. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this this, uh, this blue thing is something additional. Uh -huh. it's, it may be an artifact of the three band calculation. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Indeed, in the full calculation, we, we don't see anything other than this. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay, so we know that the patterns will spectrum roughly Sorry. can be maybe possible. So, what will be the blue points? Which cause maybe some Fermi energy? Uh, blue points, uh, artifacts. Where will that point represent in the in the in the, 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 the KXQ one plane? Oh, it's here. Oh, and you don't have any node. You don't have any, any node there. Yeah, it's built. No, no, we don't see it. And you can probably tune this blue curve a bit up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, again, uh, this is just an illustration. You have to do a full band structure. Um, okay, so here um, uh, let me introduce uh, what are the secondary orders that paradise group can use. So paradise group uh, is a composite of two electrons and momentum p. So if you have a composite like that, you can scatter an electron into a hole and, and shift its momentum. So, uh, but uh, you, if you have not only one pi dense wave order parameter, but have two at different momentum, then you can uh, scatter an electron into a hole and scatter it back into an electron using the second pi dense wave. And the net effect is just to shift the momentum of the original electron. So this gives you a non-superconducting order if you compose these two pi dense wave. So uh, if we use the pi dense wave at plus px and minus px, uh, this process generates a charge density wave at 2 px. Uh, you can also see the same thing uh, in ginsburg landau theory. And so this charge density wave has an interesting feature pointed by, you know, point out by Harrison and Sebastian. Uh, namely, uh, this charge density wave can connect the, can get these arcs we talk about and make it into a small electron pocket. So, uh, and this electron pocket, the uh, size of it, if we use the large Fermi surface and the measured momentum, the size of this pocket happens to match with, uh, perfectly with the quantum oscillation experiment. So, uh, giving uh, evidence that this may be the electron pocket we see in the high field um, state. And so the uh, pseudo gap, uh, one of the pseudo gap puzzle is no longer a puzzle. Namely, why do we have open arcs? Uh, so if, if there's charge density wave, we can see uh, that the, the arcs are secretly connected by a brilliance of holding up charge density. So this, uh, and uh, uh, you may wonder that uh, I use pi dense wave at px and minus px. And I can also use it pi dense wave at px and py. That generates some dense wave at px plus py and px minus py. But experimentally, there's no charge that we observe at this moment. So our way fail to explain experiments. Actually, no, because uh, uh, Pointed by uh, Attenberg and collaborators. Uh, at this momentum, uh, we can either have a charge density wave or a current density wave, giving a magnetization, so we call it magnetization density wave. So, and uh, because charge density wave is not found, we think that is the case that the uh, secondary order generated as, at this momentum is purely magnetization density. Why is this PX plus PY will be magnet magnetic or current density wave? Instead well, in in, uh, in pi dense wave, we can uh, have both charge dense wave and magnetization. 
depends on the phase of the other parameter. Uh, some, uh, one of them may be more, one of them may be less. For some phase choice, it's completely dependent on each other. And in theory, we don't know, we don't have a preference. But in uh, experiments, there's no choice. So you can explain CDW, which is in 2x or 2y. Yeah. Well, in x plus y, x minus y will be magnetic. That's yeah. anyway. This is it's not observing it, so it's a prediction. Oh. So, uh, well, since, since you asked about this, uh, maybe I can explain more about this uh, four other parameters. Uh, well, because this other parameter can be uh, pretty complicated to think about. So we have four complex other parameter, each has its uh, U1 phase. So we have four U1 phase together, and each have different meaning. So how do we understand it? So the first one, the obvious one, is the, the overall U1 phase of all of them. That, uh, so uh, that carry, because these are two electrons, they carry charge two. So this phase is related to the charge conservation and carry charge two. And, so, and then it's the relative phase between them. And the relative, this relative phase, Uh, determine the phase of the charge density with other parameter. So the relative phase between these two uh, determines the position of the charge density wave strike in real space. And, and similarly, there's a in y direction. So this phase, if it's ordered, it's break U1 symmetry, and these two phases if ordered break translation symmetry. And, and there's uh, uh, the most subtle phase. This one. And this phase is going to determine whether we have magnetization density or charge density. And momentum Px plus Py. And this phase is not uh, is not protected by any symmetry. So uh, it, it will not gonna fluctuate. There is a preferred value for this phase. Uh, whichever phase tries to get lower its energy should be P. Okay. And um, so in band structure calculation, uh, we also find that in that the phase uh, it's minus one, and this phase tries to be purely magnetization density wave at momentum Px plus P1. And if you are interested, you can check out here. Is a magnetic density wave people also call loop current order? Uh, is that related to it? In Kupris, when you say loop current order, uh, people usually call the, well, there's a loop current by uh, Chandra Obama. But that's that's a, a loop current that does not break translation. It's loop current within what you can stop. But people also talk about loop cur loop current that uh, has period two the lattice spacing. And um, uh, uh, it, well, in our case, this period is pretty large. So it's a different. Loop. Yeah, just like charge density, loop current are, are you can see loop current very often. <laughs> now I briefly sketch our theoretical work. Um, so, but just to uh, just to avoid confusion, but sometimes when I talk about quantum disorder, people think about disorder, but it has nothing to do with disorder. It's a perfectly clean system we consider. And the quantum disorder uh, phase of an operator O 
I just mean uh, uh, this uh, all other parameter O has a long correlation length, but it does, doesn't really condense. So uh, in this case, I want this four, F, uh, four other parameters to have a large amplitude, but the overall U1 phase is fluctuating. So the case uh, for, for this PDW, we actually have uh, many choices about which phase is fluctuating. And here our choice is that uh, all the relative phase of PDW are locked. So the charge density wave and magnetization density wave are locked perfectly under this space at low temperature. It's only the overall U1 phase is fluctuating. So and now we have, uh, because this uh, secondary orders are, are perfectly ordered, we have a new unit cell in, in the, uh, we have a new unit cell, a new brilliant zone. And uh, we can imagine a separation of energy scale. At high energy, we have this electron firing into this bosons to give the uh, fire density wave. But at low energy, uh, we let the boson, charge 2E boson, fluctuate uh, to give this. Uh, so, so then uh, this fluctuating high density wave become a uh, well defined question we can try to solve. Okay. So, uh, usually uh, the problem of fluctuating uh, superconductivity is a hard problem. Uh, especially for hard for D wave superconductor. Uh, because uh, for D wave superconductor, you have a gap is node at, at some momentum point. And, uh, uh, and this gap is Fermi uh, couples uh, to the fluctuating boson. And this coupling is so crucial that uh, so, and this electron, this, this node is just due to the superconductivity, and you may think uh, if the uh, 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 pairs are fluctuating, and this uh, quasi particle electron excitation is also completely changed. So this kind of thing can really lead to fractionalizations. And then the, you may think that uh, the underlying low energy excitation is not electron, but some black fractionalized particle that's immune to the fluctuating of both But uh, uh, luckily, uh, in the paradigm's work case, we have a much easier choice that can give us a conventional state. Uh, so so uh, as I said, uh, uh, well, maybe let me give, just give the uh, end of the story, just give the message. So the idea is that, um, in the new unit cell, the original band is cut into many bands, actually 18 bands in this case. And only one band is gapless. All other bands are gap dependent. And the gapless band is giving the pocket, this electron pocket. But because it's in a super paradise in which there is a global pocket, its electron pocket weakly means this whole pocket. And, but luckily, uh, this uh, this pocket is, cons uh, is composed by nodal electrons. Nodal electrons are only weakly coupled to paradigm. So as we fluctuate the paradigm wave, we can imagine this global pocket just become a pure electron pocket. And for the rest of electrons, they're gapped by the paradigm wave. So as we fluctuate the paradigm wave, we can uh, keep the pairing gap because the uh, because the uh, you two electrons want to be together and um, uh, to excite a single electron at anti node always cause it that. And at low energy, the anti node electron mode become a boson mode. Only the boson mode is fluctuating. And instead of a condensed boson, we let the boson go into an insulator, multi insulator of boson in the new unit cell. So at the end, what we get is just a small electron pocket, giving the quantum oscillation and the 
Capri's arc. And the rest of the electron, the leasing electron, we form a multi insulator of boson. And that flow energy mode is all bosonic and that's the star we realize. So that can explain why the, the density carrier density is missing and the density of space. And it's uh, uh, then there is a very interesting theoretical question. Um, uh, so now let's forget about the gap is electron and only think about the gap antinode electrons. And the, 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 there seems to be a group of paradox that's uh, in the superconductor case, the higher density with other case, we have a gap of global bands that's mixed between particle and hole. And when we fluctuate the higher dense wave, uh, we're supposed to have an insulator of pairs. And in the insulator, uh, the single electron excitation charge conserved, electron does not mix with hole. But if, if electron does not mix with hole, how do we still open the superconductor gap? How, what is the electron excitation band? And that's the main theoretical problem we're trying to solve. I don't have time to give you an interest if you can just check out. The story is that uh, uh, part of the Bogliubov band uh, is still an electron band. And the other part has to be understood as some electron boson continuum. And that can be explained in our class. OK, uh, now I don't need to talk about it. Uh, let me end here. Thank you. Thank you. We're almost there. Okay. Maybe you can summarize in five minutes. You can just all the way. Okay. Otherwise, we can invite you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> no, I think, I think we have to go. But we yeah, got, we to got go. the summary just now. Yeah. You are, you are good. Do you want to summarize a few more? Yeah, one minute. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so this talk is mainly introducing what to look at is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a good talk. <laughs> it's good to have an action. Right. Uh, for, for our um, proposal, and here is the summary, uh, basically, uh, because the experiments indicate uh, uh, conventional state with electron carrier and low energy. So we actually try very hard to get a conventional theory with only uh, electron and charge to be both on the stone fractionalized particle. It's actually very hard to do that. And the way we do that is we imagine a fluctuating high density wave state. We first start from an outer high density wave where the spectrum looks very much like the R pass. Okay. And then we, at a low energy, we let the condensed boson fluctuate to destroy the superconductor. And the way we do that is that we keep the uh, new unit cell, but we let the boson go through a superconductor insulator transition in the enlarged unit cell. So at the end, some of the electrons go into a boson emod insulator in the new unit cell. And the other electron gives a small electron. And that can expand the experiments. Uh, which which current state is going to be so the PW state going to explain? Uh, it's going to expand this ground state uh, because 8% of things are and 16% of things are 60% of things. I feel it's bigger than if C2 and C2. And so if we uh, lose the restriction, we can also expand the finite temperature pseudo gap as long as the superconducting TC is much smaller than T star. We can treat TC as zero, and our theory can also expand the finite temperature pseudo And superconducting D wave order is? We, we ignore that completely. It will be D wave. But you can also consider. It will be a different yeah. Okay. Maybe you can talk about this next time. <laughs> <laughs> What is next time? I don't know what we can invite. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thank you. That was a very good talk. I mean,
I'm sorry we, you know, prevented you from getting to say all that you wanted to say, <laughs> oh, but okay. I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, I for that. Yeah, we have some uh, meeting as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're interested. Yeah, sure.